Well, good morning, church. It's good to see everyone here today. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Bobby Jones, and I'll be filling in for Brother Sam today. It's good to be with you. You know, as we read through the Bible and we look at the uh, book of Psalms, we read in there where it says, Sing to the Lord a new song. And it's always interesting to say that it never once says in the Bible, Sing to the Lord an old song. It always says, Sing to the Lord a new song. Now, it can be kind of challenging for us to think about that because does that mean that we can't ever sing a song a second time, that we always have to sing a, a very brand new song? Well, as we think about what the Israelites did and the, the believers back in the Old Testament, they, they did sing those songs again, but what the, t the context of the Scripture is telling us is when you sing to the Lord, it needs to be fresh. It needs to be passionate and meaningful that what we're singing to him. So today, we want to sing to the Lord a new song. I hope you'll sing with passion, with energy, with love for Jesus Christ and all that he has done. We may sing a couple of songs today that you're not quite familiar with, but they're easy to catch on to. So we in invite you right now, let's stand together as we sing to our King, Jesus Christ. Sing to the King who is coming to reign. Glory to Jesus, the Lamb that was slain. Life and salvation, His empire shall bring. And joy to the nations when Jesus is King. Come, let us sing a song, a song declaring that we belong to Jesus. He is all we need. Lift up a hand of praise, sing now with voices raised. Jesus, sing to the King. For his returning, we watch and we pray. We will be ready the dawn of that day. Good morning and welcome to Beth Seda Baptist Church. It's my joy and privilege to welcome you here this morning. If you're guests with us in person online, my name is Brad Ball. I'm a pastor. It's my joy and privilege to welcome you here. Thank you for taking the time to join us in worship. And we just pray that the Lord would bless you and speak into your heart today. If you are a guest, text GUEST to 478-242-7200. 
And if you do that, we'll actually donate $5 in honor of you to our local Joy Clinic, which is a ministry that ministers people uh, that do not have health insurance or dental insurance, but most of all, to share the gospel and the love of Jesus with them. And so we figured out Sam's not here, and uh, we're grateful to have Bobby Jones here uh, leading worship with us today. And he's been leading worship in the area for I don't know how long, quite a while. And so we're so glad to have him with, here with us today. S say, where's Sam? Uh, Hannah has moved to North Dakota and to take her new teaching position just across the line in Minnesota. So they've gone up there to be with her, get help get her moved in. So Bobby will be here next week with us, and so be in prayer for him. And we're just so glad he could come and join us and lead us in worship. And so let me just remind you, we're here for one reason, to be passionate about life change. And the only person that changes lives is Jesus Christ. And it's our hope and prayer to help you grow in your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and that the Lord might speak to you. Let me just remind you, August 15th, grand reopening. You don't want to miss that, 9 a.m. Um, life groups, 10 a.m. service. We'll have a meal and a bunch of stuff for kids. Uh, going on for that August 28th to 29th. Go ahead and put that on your calendar. You have Matt Adams here. He's evangelist and illusionist. He'll be doing apologetic seminar Saturday morning, uh, illusion magic show for the whole family. You need to get people here. Uh, he's seeing multiple people get saved at his magic show. So you got people you want to try to get them to hear the gospel, but they don't really much think about coming to church. Get them here that Saturday night. And he'll be preaching that Sunday morning. Also, we do have one announcement about children. Um, So Wednesday nights will be kicked off on August 18th. Uh, so if you can help with meals, just sign up over there. And uh, because we'll be kicking everything off on that Wednesday night, be doing every Wednesday night. And so if you can help in that way, we greatly appreciate it. So let me read to you a couple verses, and then we're going to pray. Psalm 146, verse 1 says, Hallelujah, my soul praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord all my life, and I will sing to my God as long as I live. Verse 147, chapter 147, verse 1 says, Hallelujah, which means praise the Lord. He says, How good it is to sing to our God. I love this next phrase, for praise is pleasant and lovely. It's good to come to the house of God and praise the Lord. So I encourage you to praise and worship the Lord today, and let's praise Him. So let's go, Lord, in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do come to you this morning. And, Lord, we are so grateful that we have the freedom to come. There was nothing hindering us getting here. And so, Lord, as we just calm our hearts for a minute, Lord, please take away every distraction. that will distract people from you and the word and worship. Lord, we need to hear from you today. We need you to speak in our hearts today. Lord, you know where every person is and in their walk with you or if they don't have a walk with you. Lord, we pray today would be the day of salvation for many all across the world. So we welcome your Holy Spirit to meet with us, be with Brother Bobby and the praise team as they just lead us in worship, Lord. May you use their gifts, may you anoint them to usher us into your presence. And as we sing, we sing to you as the text says, man, it, it, it's pleasant, it's lovely, it's good to worship you. And so, Lord, I pray we would want to worship you today, not play church. 
not go through motions. But Lord, may we realize who we're singing to, who we're proclaiming, who we're here for. It's you, Lord, and you alone. Not to us, Lord, but to you alone be all the glory and honor and praise this morning. And so, Lord, we give you this service. We praise you in advance for how you're going to meet with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The most famous verse in the Bible, verse from the Bible is John 3, 16, right? And it, because it summarizes the context of the whole Bible and God's love for humanity. Can we say that verse together as a church uh, as we set start out? Let's, let's say that together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The next song we're going to sing talks about that text from John 3, 16. It's based on that scripture text, the most familiar verse in the Bible. So let's stand together as we worship in God's love. your failure 
sinners, bring your addictions. Come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting. God so loved the world. Are you thankful for God's love this morning? Let's give him praise, okay? As we continue to worship, let's worship the beautiful, the wonderful, the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Here we go. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its word. It sounds as music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. It tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. It tells of one whose loving heart can fill my deepest woe, who in each sorrow bears a part that none can bear. name it is. 
stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Amen, church. Amen. Let's give it praise today. All, right. All God's people said? Amen. Amen. All righty, kids, time for Children's Church. All right. Y'all be going out this way. All righty. They're already excited. Look at them flying. Did I get bumped? There you go. All righty. Praise the Lord. All right, you can uh, also give in the house. You can text give, go online, drop it by the office, or put it in the mail again. Thank you all for uh, your faithfulness to give. Thank you, Brother Bobby, uh, for leading us in worship and just reminding us how great God is and how great His Son is that came. Uh, he loved us so much that He gave His one and only Son so that we might have eternal life. Praise the Lord that uh, we can worship him and praise him and hear from him uh, this morning. And so let's go, Lord, in prayer. And we're just going to ask him uh, to speak this morning and ask for his hand to be upon this. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do come to you this morning. And we are just uh, ask that you would speak to us through your word this morning. Lord, I ask that you'd cleanse my tongue. Help me to say only what you want said. And Lord, I pray for your spirit's anointing. And Father, we ask deliverance from the evil one, Lord. We pray you'd have no sway here. And Lord, we ask that you would speak. In Jesus' name, amen. Some of you may know the name. Most of you may not know the name if you're young, but there's a legendary coach by the name of Vince Lombardi. Coached the Green Bay Packers, won the first two Super Bowls, and he, he's known for this saying. He didn't really come up with it, but he was mainly known for this saying, the best defense is a good offense. And by that, what that he was saying is, I need to have an offense that will stay out there on the field and be able to score every time and keep the other team off the field. Now, he wasn't the only one that said that. General Patton said, hey, the only, in war, the only sure defense is offense. George Washington in 1799 said, offensive operations oftentimes is the surest, if not only the means of defense. And today we're going to be in 1 Peter. And we're going to see Peter, how he talks about, he doesn't use this phrase, the best defense is a good offense, but he uses that kind of terminology to vividly describe for you and I the spiritual warfare that we're going to face as Christ followers. And so today I want to talk about the best defense is a good offense. So the take home truth today is this on your outline. Uh, they're in the back, they're online. If you're online, you can download one. It says this, God wants us to take our relationship with him seriously. God wants us to take our relationship with him seriously. So we're going to be in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 through 9. And so let's read this text and see what Peter tells. This is at the end of this this epistle that he's wrote, and he's concluding uh, his words to these people. Now, Peter had wrote to encourage Christ followers. If you read in the very first chapter, he's talking to uh, Christ followers in Asia Minor that had been scattered due to persecution and trials and suffering. Actually, the theme of this epistle is suffering. And look at what he says. He says, all right, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you 
at the proper time, at the due time, casting all your cares on him because he cares about you or for you. Be sober-minded, be alert. Your adversary, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion, looking, seeking for anyone he can devour. Resist him, firm in the faith, knowing that the same kind of sufferings are being experienced by fellow believers throughout the world. So he's telling us, hey, we need to take our relationship with the Lord seriously because we're going to be in warfare. We're going to have spiritual warfare. We're going to have persecution. We're going to have trials and trouble. The question I would ask you today is in this pandemic, in this corona apocalypse, have you taken your relationship seriously with the Lord? Are you taking your relationship seriously with the Lord today? Or have you allowed all this junk? Have you allowed all this fear? Have you allowed all this confusion to keep you from your relationship with Jesus Christ? See, the devil will use a lot of things in our lives to keep us away from our relationship with the Lord. And so Peter gives us some relationships and how you can be active, which actively in your relationship and how you can take your relationship seriously with the Lord. Number one, the first command is this, allow God to humble you. Don't miss that. Allow God to humble you. Now, this is not an active offensive command. Uh, he's saying, man, if you want to get serious about being on the fence, you've got to take your relationship with the Lord seriously by humbling yourselves. That means you allow God, the, 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 the verb is in the passive voice. You don't do it. You allow God to humble yourself. You allow God to work in your life. You can't humble yourself. See, humility recognizes, hey, I need God. I need his grace. I need his strength. You want God's grace in your life? You've got to humble yourself. Is that natural for any of us? No, not a bit. It's not natural. But look at, if you've got your Bible open or if you've got something turned on with your text, look at the verses right before our text says what god resists the proud but gives grace to the humble you're to humble yourselves therefore under what what does it say in the text the mighty hand of god i believe that might be the only time that phrase is used in the new testament but you say man we're to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. What is that? What is that? We acknowledge God is sovereign. We acknowledge the providence of God. We're saying, God, I need you, and it's all about you. And no matter what happens in my life, I can trust you. It's like Joseph said at the end of his life, brothers, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. And he allowed God to humble himself and work in his life. See, you've got to realize that God's got a plan for your life, but you've got to be willing to acknowledge that you're a sinner and humble yourselves before God. I mean, that's how we come to know Christ. You've got to acknowledge what? You're a sinner. You inherited a sin nature from Adam and Eve. Why? Because they ate of the forbidden fruit, and we inherit that sin nature. I don't care who you've been born from. That's our ancestors. That's where we come from. We come from Adam. Then we come from Noah. And all of them were sinners, and we inherit that sin nature. And the only way you can come to know God is acknowledge that you're a sinner. Why? We all fall short of the glory of God. Our sin leads to brokenness. But praise Lord, as 1 Peter 2.24 says, He Himself, Jesus did what? Bore our sins in His body on what? On the tree, having died to sin so that we might have righteousness. So you've got to come to a place where you believe that's what Jesus did. He paid for your sin debt. You've got to repent of your sins. That's a spiritual U-term where you realize, man, it's about now following Jesus. It's no longer about me. How does that happen when you put your faith and trust in him? 
and you ask him to save you. That's humility right there. You think about it. You come to know Jesus, you got to humble yourself before him and say, you're God, I'm not. I need eternal life. I don't have it. Your righteousness is the only righteousness. I don't have any righteousness that can get me to heaven. And you got to come to place and humble yourself and bow before God and give your life to Christ. And praise God when you do. He'll save you, give you eternal life. Hey, and you'll spend all eternity with him. But you're like, hey, this is not written here to lost people. So what is he saying here for you and me? I think a great example of it was in this reading, in one of our readings this week, John 3.30, John the Baptist principle. He must increase and I must decrease. That's allowing God to humble you. God, it's about you. Help me not to increase, but Lord, may you increase in me and may I die to self. May I crucify it on the cross and God, may you work in my life. He says, when we do that under the mighty hand, so that he may what? exalts you that word means to lift up it's uh, it's actually talking about the lifting up a revival how when you humble yourselves on the mighty hand of god and you realize it's all about him and you allow him to work in your life god does the work in your life praise god and that's what god wants to do in all of our lives now he says he will exalt you in, at the proper time or at the due time what does that mean um, god will do that when it's right you know what i'm saying He's in control. He's sovereign. We're not. But 2 Corinthians 7, 14, remember God told Solomon, he said, hey, what? If my people, called by my name, will what first? Will humble themselves. Now, how does that happen? You've got to allow God to humble you. And when God humbles you, you'll do the rest of that verse. You'll pray and seek the face of God and turn from your evil ways. And see, when, we're, when we humble ourselves, we're like, God, I need your grace. Man, I need your grace. God resists the proud, but he gives what? He gives grace. What's grace? He gives me what I don't deserve. That's good stuff. That he wants to give us good things every day. But for that to happen, you've got to allow God to humble you. Every day. And you come on and say, Lord, it's you. This is another day. It's about you. It's not about me. So first, you've got to allow God to humble you. Second, second command, if we're going to take our relationship seriously with God, is you've got to acknowledge your dependence upon God. You've got to acknowledge your dependence upon God. Verse 7, he says, cast think what all your care. Now, this word cast means to throw upon. Secular word there, they would say, hey, you got a heavy burden, you're throwing everything on the, on the back of that camel. The best example I have is in my own household. Uh, Pepper, he loves to chase anything. He's the most athletic dog I've ever had. You throw that ball, throw that toy, he'll bring it back. Throw that ball, bring it back. You come to my house, he's going to want you to throw it too. But eventually what will happen? He'll get tired. Praise God. Yeah, that, that too. He'll get tired. But praise God, God never gets tired of us. Casting all our care upon him. Now this word here, care means anxiety it says casting all your anxiety all your worries all your stresses all your tribulations all your persecution everything that's weighing you down he's saying cast it on the lord now, the thing is anxiety will do what what will worry do in our lives? It divides our mind and distracts us from acknowledging our dependence upon God. So who do you take your worries and trials to? Now the great thing is here, look at this, casting all your cares on him, casting all your anxieties on him, casting all your worries on him. 
Because what? He cares. Now, the great thing is that he cares is in the present tense. It's a present tense verb, which means he continually cares about what's going on in your life. Praise God. <laughs> Every detail. But the thing is here, the word here cares is a different word. It does not mean anxiety. It means watchful care. We, we casting all your worries and all your anxieties on God. Why? Because he presently, every single day, 24-7, cares for you. You need to understand, God is our caretaker. He wants to take care of you every single day. Some of you maybe have a new baby, or when you have a new baby, or you have a new grandbaby, and they start first taking those steps, what are you doing? You just don't say, go ahead, walk. Go ahead and walk. No, you're there helping them, right? Take those steps, right? Praise God. That's the way God is with us. Helping us take steps. And he cares about us. See, God never gets tired of us casting all our cares upon him. That's a that's great. Did you know that God cares about you every second of every minute of every day? If you don't believe me, you, if you don't know Philippians 4, 6, 7, write it down and put it to memory. Be anxious for nothing. Put in everything through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Make your request known to God. Which surpasses what? All understanding. And the peace of God will guard what? Your heart and mind. See, man, when, when we depend upon God and we don't worry about things and we seek His kingdom, God can take, it, take care of everything. He says what? Seek first what? The kingdom of God and His righteousness and what? All these things shall be added unto you. He can take care of it. So acknowledge your dependence upon God. Allow God to humble you. But the next command in this text is, you've got to acknowledge spiritual warfare is real. You've got to acknowledge it is real. It is real. You face it every day if you're a Christ follower. And that's what Peter is reminding us here. You need to understand, you're a Christ follower today. You've given your life to Christ today. Your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life that you have an enemy. And it is Satan. The minute you start getting serious about your relationship with God, the minute you start asking God to move in your life, the minute you start praying for lost people, the minute you start deciding to pray and seek God in the Word and take your relationship serious with God instead of playing in church, you need to understand the devil will come after you. Because you have an enemy. Because before you came to know Jesus, you may not realize this, but you, but you were basically a child of the world and the devil. You're like, well, I was a good little boy and girl. Well, I understand, but you still, you were living in your sins. You had, come not, had not come to know Jesus. And he says what? The Satan is like what here in the text? A roaring lion. Now, the, what does the word devil mean? He's a slander. He's an adversary. He's a father of lies. And he's what? He's accuser of the brethren. And a bunch more. I don't have time to do a topical study here on, on Satan, but go study you'll find out he does even more but what is good he talks about a prowling lion but isn't there a lion greater than that lion of the tribe of judah and the root of david praise god but you need to be aware that satan comes after you and will try to put you in his you in his crosshairs it says here what He's prowling around like a roaring lion. Present tense. Prowling. Which means he's here today. He is. Trying to distract you if all possible. But do lions roar while they prowl? No. They're going to sneak up on you 
like stealth, and then at the last minute, tack, or at the last second, then they'll roar. And what is the roar to do? It's to intimidate you. It's to cause you to fear. You need to understand the devil's just the same way. He's not going to announce. He's not going to come up and say, hey, Brad, I'm fixing to get you to do this right now. I want you to sin this way. I want you to... Uh, no, he's going to slowly creep up. And try to get you to buy in to all kinds of lies. If you don't want to be the devil's next meal, uh, you might want to apply these three commands here. Verse 8 and 9. Number one, be spiritually awake. Be spiritually awake. He says be sober-minded. means to be composed in your mind. He says let us stay awake and be self-controlled. Now, what does the devil want to do to you? He wants to lull you to sleep. Oh, you don't need to read your Bible. You don't need to pray much. How many of you ever decided, okay, I'm going to spend time in prayer, and all of a sudden you get all kinds of distractions in your life? <laughs> or you start thinking about your to-do list? Oh, gosh. Anyway. He can distract you. He wants to distract. So we've got to be spiritually awake. See, Satan wants to convince you, and he's convinced a lot of people in America, I think, that he's not real. And when he does that, he's going to play on your fears and your pride. See, he wants to convince you that he's not real, or he wants to kind of convince you that he's in a red suit with a pitchfork. And he's not. He's an angel of light that will try to distract you, as scriptures tell. See, Satan is looking for people that are spiritually naive. He's like, okay, there's one, man. I can pick them off. Oh, I, oh, they've let down their guard. They're trying to do it on their own. They're not humbling themselves. They're trying, they think they can do it right now. Bam. And we've all been there, done that. Hmm. Thought, okay, I can do it on my own. The next thing you know, the devil comes. Let me read to you 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 5. It's not up, up there, but Paul talks about spiritual warfare. Listen to what he says. For although we live in the flesh, we live in the flesh, we do not wage war according to the flesh. Since the weapons of our warfare, don't miss that, weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but are powerful through God for the dem demolition of strongholds. We demolish arguments and every proud thing that is raised up against the knowledge of God, and we take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. What are our weapons? You got the Bible, you got prayer, you got the armor of God, but we got to be spiritually awake. I think one of the problems in America today is the church has just gone to sleep, it's not awake. And they've been rocked to sleep. Just keep coming to church, do your thing, don't pray for lost people, don't pray, the, don't get in the Word, you know, just kind of do your normal thing. You're good people, you know. And he rocks us to sleep that way many times. So you've got to be spiritually awake. Second, you've got to be spiritually alert. Why do you say that? Every day you wake up, every day you wake up, the devil will try to trip you up in any way possible. He really will. And so you got to, the minute you wake up, you got to be, all right, all right, God, I'm yours. Lead me today. Guide me today. You got to wake up ready. Or if you're not even thinking, get that cup of coffee in you and start thinking about Jesus. Whatever it is. But you've got to be spiritually alert. Dave Butt said this, 90% of the battle in the area of spiritual warfare is simply being aware that there is indeed a battle going on around you. You've got to understand. You know Christ, I don't care what age you are. 
You teenagers, you know Christ, it's a battle. You're fixing to go back to school, it's going to be a battle. Are you going to live for Jesus or blend in with the world? Every day, you've got to be spiritually alert. Remember when Jesus went to the garden to pray right before the cross, and he told Peter in Matthew 26, 41, he says, Watch and pray. Why? Lest you enter into temptation. What? The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. See, we've got to be spiritually alert. If not, we'll give in to the flesh. I don't care who you are. But we've got to be spiritually alert, spiritually awake. But then verse 9, you've got to be ready to resist the devil by standing firm in your faith. Resist the devil, he says here, by standing firm in your faith. This word resist him is another command. It means to what? Withstand. It means to, to stand against. What does that mean? We stand against <coughs> the assault of the devil that comes at us. And you've got to be ready to resist that. What does that mean? If you're a Christ follower... You're at war every day. There is a war that's going on. Do we see it visibly? No, it's an invisible war. But you've got to understand, there is a spiritual war going on. See, the enemy and his demons, they'll attack many ways. Man, they attack many people like this. We've got false philosophies, false religions, false teachers, false doctrine, false morals. We've got all that in our country and in this world. How do we resist the devil? By standing on God's word, by obeying his commands, by praying and putting on the armor. And Wednesday night, we'll talk more about that. We'll kick off our prayer service again this Wednesday night, and we'll talk about how we stand by putting on the armor. Mark down August 11th, if you can be here, we're going to do a prayer night of prayer walking. We're going to pray throughout the whole building and pray for God's hand. But what do we do as Christ? How do we resist the devil by standing firm in the faith. Just mark down James 4, 7. If you don't know this verse, you need to know this verse, okay? It says what? Therefore, submit to God, which means humble yourself. Resist the devil. I like, like the next part, what? And he will flee. Now, does that mean he flees permanently? No. He's just going to say, okay. He'll go back off. And he's going to regroup, and it will come, come at you another way. Does Satan always use the same strategies and tactics? No. You always use the same strategies and tactics in sports and more? No, it depends on who the enemy is. So Peter's saying your faith is not passive. Well, I just sit here, I'm a good, I'm a good Christian. No, you've got to be ready for war. That means you've got to resist the devil by standing firm in your faith. And that means to be rooted in your faith, to know your faith, to stand on God's word. Greg Lowry says this, The devil has been at this for a long time. He says he's no idiot, and when he tries to tempt you away from God's path, he won't present his full agenda. He will say, just take a little nibble. Just have a taste for the fun of it. It won't hurt you. Just this little one time, and you know the rest of the story. He says that's why the Bible tells us to resist the devil. Keep as much distance from him as possible. Like what he says here. Flee temptation and do not leave a forwarding address. Understand, Satan hates you, he's a liar, he's a murderer, and he has no truth. And you've got to understand, there's a line coming at you every day. And if you don't have your armor on, you're liable to be his next meal. Or... You'll be mounted on his wall like a big bass. So we got to be ready. You say, well, 
Fred, it just seems like I'm under a lot of warfare, and it just seems like I'm the only one going through it. No, look at the last of the text here. It says what? Knowing, which means in the past, it's actually a perfect tense, which means a past action with continuing results. Hey, knowing what? The same kind of sufferings are being experienced by your, by your fellow believers throughout the world. What he's saying is, man, there's brothers and sisters you have in Christ you've never met. They're going through the same warfare. They're going through the same struggle. They're going through the same trials. And he's saying, hey, you need to understand, resist the devil, stand firm in your faith. You're like, I don't understand all this. No, I don't understand all of it either, but I know God is sovereign. And God can help me through this if I will look to him and be clothed in him. And I stand firm in my faith. See, there are no accidents in the economy of God. God never says, oops. And if you'll stand firm in your faith and you trust him, Man, you're under the protective cloud of His grace. You need to understand, anything that comes to you had to be allowed through God. You say, even in warfare? Yeah, go read Job. God allowed Satan to test him. You need to understand, Satan is only God's delivery boy. And it's always to help you draw closer to him so that you might know his plans and purposes for life. So he can growl and roar and bark at us all he wants. But if we'll stand firm in our faith and resist him, we can have victory through Christ, in Christ alone. But you've got to be willing to resist the devil Let me give you this other quote by a football coach. I guess since tomorrow would have been my dad's birthday, it's good to give two coaches quotes. Hall of Fame football coach John Madden, you may not know him, but you may know more about the game, Madden, says this, all a prevent defense does is prevent you from winning. You say, what is that? Ask the Atlanta Falcons. They thought they'd play prevent defense and just keep the short passes and not try to give up long touchdowns and end up Tom Brady came back and beat them. If you attempt to play defense against the devil, you will lose. Now, I'm not saying you fight the devil in your own strength. I'm saying you fight offensive with the weapons that God gives you. You've got to stand firm in him. And if you'll stand firm in your faith, if you'll stand firm in the armor of God, if you'll stand on the word of God, you can have victory. See, the best defense against our enemy is what? A strong offense. Where you stand in the word, you stand on the word, you're covered in the blood of Christ, you're covered in the armor of God, you're cl- covered in the righteousness of God, then you can stand firm in your faith, so when those attacks come at you, you're covered with the shield of faith and the word so that you might have victory. And the only way for you to have victory like that is you to take your relationship with God seriously. If you don't take your relationship with God seriously, you have nothing to protect you from those fiery darts that will come at you. And Satan will take headshots and heart shots And he'll take whatever shot he can to hit any of us if we do not take a relationship with him seriously. So allow God to humble you. Is that easy? No. But you need to understand, folks. God can't use us till he breaks us. And once we're broken then we acknowledge our dependence upon God. 
And when you and I acknowledge our dependence upon God, then we realize, all right, God, this is a war going on, and man, I need your help. And that comes by knowing that you have weapons and learning to use them. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do come to you this morning. We thank you for this text. Wow, what a text. If you're a Christ follower here today, let me ask you a question. How's your walk with the Lord? How are you doing with this warfare? Is there any sin that you need to confess so that you might be able to walk out of here cleansed, fit and useful for the kingdom's work? If you just need prayer today, something's going on in your life, maybe it's warfare going on in your life and you just need prayer today, I, I'm just going to ask you, nobody looking around, just me, just raise your hand. If you just say, hey man, I really need prayer, I'm, I'm struggling with something right now. Thank you. I just need God's hand. I need God to work. I need God to answer. Thank you all. Let me, let me pray for those hands that were raised. Lord, I, you know what's going on, Lord. I don't, but I believe you're sovereign and you do. And so, Lord, I pray you would intervene and you would work in these requests, Lord. Lord, I pray you would just restore and you would encourage. And, Lord, if there needs to be forgiveness, there would be forgiveness and cleansing. Lord, whatever it is, Lord, I pray you would work in those requests. But if you're here today also, and you, you might say, Brad, I, I can't fight in this battle because I've never come to know Christ. Or maybe you're online and you say, Brad, I don't know this Jesus, but I'm ready to come follow him. I invite you to call on the name of Jesus. Say, what do I need to do? Is it about joining the church? No. It's about you doing business with God and understand this is a serious relationship. Where you're going to say no to self and yes to Jesus and follow him the rest of the days of your life. And so just, if that's you today, I invite you to pray right now. If you're by yourself, pray out loud. If you're with a group, pray silently. God will hear you. Just say, Dear Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner. I've blown it. Broken your laws. But God, I do believe that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sins and was buried in the tomb. But he rose again on the third day and he's alive and living today. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, right now to come into my heart and be my Lord, Master, and Savior from this moment on. Thank you, Lord, for saving me, calling me, and accepting me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, we encourage you just to let us know. We're going to have an invitation. We encourage you to let us know. Or if you're online, just text SAVED to that number, 478-242-7200. If you're interested in baptism or membership, just text the word baptism or member. If you got prayer requests, just text PRAY to that number. We want you to be obedient to God. But we're just going to have a time of invitation. You need to understand. Let me just go ahead and just clue you in you saints of God that walk with God and walk closely with God let me just remind you you probably do this but if you forget this let me just remind you because sometimes we forget things right let me remind you every time we have an invitation you're like God's not calling me to come up here and pray at that time that's fine but you need to pray that God would work in other people's lives because you and I don't know what goes on in the heavenlies and you don't understand the battle and the fight and there are some people that need to make decisions and so you pray you pray and see what God wants you to do, but if you're like, okay, I'm right, who can I? You just pray that God would speak to hearts and lives would be changed. So I'm going to ask you to stand. Uh, Brother Bobby is going to lead us, and the altars are open. I'm down here. You go get with someone. You do whatever God tells you to do. Oh.
are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin, Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness is brought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. behind your regrets and mistakes come today there's no reason to make Jesus is calling bring your sorrows and trade them for joy from the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling oh come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide, forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, oh come to the altar, the Father's arms are open and leading us in worship leading us to the throne of god again just remind you uh we do start wednesday night uh, again as far as prayer night service in here 6 30 everything kicks off on the 18th with kids and everything and then uh, also uh students what time they need to be here three, three, three o'clock so students you need to be here at three o'clock today uh as y'all go to air yeah whatever urban air urban air so y'all be leaving it free so be here okay all righty well uh brother bobby and then we're going to sing us out and pray god's hand and blessings will be upon you this week good to be with you today my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You're my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. sin, my cross, my shame, rising again, I bless your name. 